Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about TypeScript, what it is, why you might want to use it, and why it's here to stay. I know um, sometimes people think certain technologies and libraries and frameworks are, oh, they're temporary and I don't need to learn it. But I think uh, you're doing yourself a huge disservice not learning TypeScript. It's got a lot of really cool, great features that are used and utilized by a lot of web developers and a lot of projects. And we're going to talk about what some of those, some of the pros of TypeScript are and some of the few cons. But uh, generally speaking, we're just going to give a quick rundown of TypeScript for those of you who may not be super familiar with it. And then in a separate video, I'll actually do a tutorial going through it and how you can get started and breaking it out piece by piece. All right, so let's dive into TypeScript. What exactly is TypeScript? TypeScript is what's referred to as a superset of JavaScript. And superset basically means that it can do everything that it's, it's sort of original programming language, in this case JavaScript, can do, and then some. If this was a superhero, um, Superman would be a superset of man. He has the ability to see, he has the ability to touch, he has the ability to eat, and urinate and all the other stuff that we do but he also has uh super abilities uh in this in this case heat vision and uh the ability to fly and so that's basically a very brief rundown of what a superset is and so uh in our case the reason that you use typescript is it gives you a lot of versatility that you may not necessarily be given in just traditional javascript and, there, and you're saying well that sounds a little bit risky like why so we gain all this new stuff but there's got to be some some cons to it not too many really other than learning um you know typescript and having to compile your code and whatnot but um the reason that you also use typescript is we 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 get these new functions every year and this new workflow right es6 is a great example of that but you have people who believe it or not are still using ie9 and safari and these awful, awful, I mean, Safari is like the new IE, but nothing's ever going to top IE. But <laughs> you have, uh, so you have these, you have these people who are using these awful web browsers and they're like, look, we can't run ES6. Uh, that's a real thing. And so TypeScript, once you get installed for the most part and you install a compiler, it will actually compile your code down all the way down to uh, ES3. That's, that's the, um, the goal anyhow. And so it brings it back. So you're writing the new JavaScript, basically, if you want to think of it that way, and then we'll compile it into something that works for these bullshit ass web browsers. And so TypeScript gives you this functionality. And some of the functionality that it gives you, and some of you may not be too familiar with object oriented programming, but that is something that is very, very big in most um, higher level languages like JavaScript and, and C Sharp and C++. And TypeScript takes that idea that's not super well used in the past in JavaScript because it's kind of a pain in the ass to do. And it says, hey, we, we're taking this, we're making it more familiar so it's less of a pain in the ass to do. But we're, we're essentially letting you do object-oriented programming quicker and faster, and it makes your life a lot easier. It also um, applies the type in TypeScript is it's really uh, the bulk of what TypeScript is used for. And that allows us to assign, um, so to dive into JavaScript a little bit um, without getting too, too bogged down, uh, JavaScript is a dynamic uh, language. And what that basically means is that if I have a string, I can turn it into an integer. And a lot of you who maybe never coded in Java or any of these strictly typed languages would never know that that's a, a big no-no. Like that doesn't work. You have to call certain functions that will allow you to do that. And so TypeScript, allows us to actually assign types of variables to our, like nor in Java, you would have a var int, int would be a number, and then you'd assign it to five or whatever. You wouldn't be able to assign it to hello world, you'd get a compile error and it'd be an issue. And the reason for that is you have these, that's a strictly type language while JavaScript is like, hell yeah, party won't give a shit about data types, let's go baby. Um, and so it sounds like, oh, well, Dylan, aren't we giving up some flexibility from dynamically typed language to strictly typed? Because that strict, we're being strict. It's, it's pretty, as, as many things are that aren't direct correlations, that word is literally strict. So we're restricting ourselves. And so 
you are giving flexibility up, but for good reason. You are essentially allowing yourself to say, look, I'm going to make it so that I have less bugs in my code. And so when I'm expecting a string, it says here I'm expecting a string. When I'm expecting a number, it says here I'm expecting a number. And it gives you a lot of flexibility in that in that now you've, excuse me, it restricts your flexibility. And so now you say, look, I'm expecting this when this is here. And because of that, you're able to catch errors and avoid errors a lot easier than you would in other circumstances. And I'm, I'm going to show you a quick, quick, um, a uh, quick uh, example of how you might do this as well as of uh, how you would assign it. It's very simple. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. So what we're looking at right now is a uh, Angular 4 application. Don't worry about any of that stuff right now. But what I want to show is here we have this function called git client. And in our git client, we're expecting one parameter. It's an ID. In this case, where what may happen is Traditionally speaking, maybe you'd have a number be in that ID, but we actually need the ID to be a string. And so here, this colon string, we have now said, hey, this ID has a value of string, like a type of string. And if it at any time gets called and it's not a string, it's going to throw us an error. And that that doesn't now, if you're not too familiar, like, well, why is that really important? Your your event, you're essentially making your code stricter so that you can catch more errors and you don't have to run it back and and try to catch these these um, type errors. Hence, TypeScript, right? And there's a lot of additional functionality as well. And this may be a little too much to dive into for this video, but you can also define additional additional types, right? In this case, we're defining a type called client that we've defined. And what that basically means is, is we've created a class. A class is, in this case, we'll, we'll consider it a type. And we're saying, hey, when you pass in this client class, I'm expecting it to have certain things. Client, in this case, is an object that we have now said, hey, uh, it's taking in a key. It's taking in a first name, a last name, an email, a phone number, and a balance. Don't worry about this question mark. That basically just means that these are optional parameters, which may or may not be there. But in here, we're saying when we pass in our client object that we've defined, it has a type of string that's associated with a key. It also has a first name of string, a last name of string, an email of string, a phone of string, and a balance of number. So if, if we have all these items, great. If we pass in a number or a string for a number, we're going to get an error. Hey, there might be something wrong with your client object. Take a look at it. Now, it will still compile, but you're going to, and it's going to run most of the time. But it's going to allow us to catch more errors, and it's super helpful in that fashion. So um, one, one other reason that we haven't really touched on TypeScript, and this is more of a, a practical reason why you might want to pick it up. As I mentioned, this is an Angular 4 application or just Angular, right? I think it's just say Angular, an Angular application. And t all the documentation, everything is in TypeScript in Angular. And that's the direction that the web is going in. It's going to continue to to allow us to have these, these additional functionalities that aren't in ES5, ES4, because we want to make JavaScript better. But the issue with, with making JavaScript better, not that it's not amazing, we love you JavaScript, uh, but uh, we can always do better. The problem with that is that web browsers are notoriously slow for updating. The second you update, you break some stuff, and here we are. So what we basically get is, hey, um, when ECMAScript or JavaScript updates their their language, and we gain new methods, new functionality, all this sort of stuff, we can now use TypeScript to inherit that, and then just compile it into something uh, into an older version of JavaScript that the web browser can understand. Now, uh, you, Angular is a good example of that. We actually, you don't, you don't actually output TypeScript files. Your TypeScript files then compile, turn into JavaScript, and go from there. Uh, TypeScript is pretty. I, I'm, I'm sure this is all. If you've never worked with an object-oriented language, um, it may be a little wonky for you, but uh, you'll pick it up pretty quickly. TypeScript is really used in general for Angular development, although there are other applications, but it's always used in Angular development. Uh, and thing to note about TypeScript, if it's if not self-evident, is you can just do basic JavaScript. You don't have to do that. 
Um, there's also additional functionality I've, I haven't covered, such as being able to return a type here on your function. So you can even say, hey, you see here I'm returning something, right? This.clients.remove, I'm actually returning this. And what this is basically means is I can assign a type of void, meaning, hey, I'm expecting a void, a void to, uh, something that doesn't have a type to return. Or here, or I'm expecting a client to be returned. Uh, here, I'm expecting a, expecting a string to be returned. So there's a lot of great functionality. It's not just about passing parameters in and creating classes and things like that or creating your own, your own types, but a lot of additional uh, type checking for JavaScript, which is a dynamic language, to make it into a stricter language. Another great example of this is the fact that we have classes. And so a lot of people maybe are more familiar with object-oriented programming now can code in an object-oriented way without it being such a hassle. And if you actually ever go and look at what the what the uh, TypeScript compiles to, you'll see how much, how, like how how much how hard it would actually be to write this file. And I, I'm sure it looks very intimidating if you're not familiar with with um, JavaScript syntax. But in this 35 lines of code or um, Angular syntax, you would probably have closer to 75 or 85 lines of code by the time that this compiles, if not more. And it's very confusing, very hard to follow. Um, and you're just be, you'll be thankful that there's TypeScript if you're trying to do object-oriented uh, JavaScript. So uh, that's today's video, guys. A little, a little rundown about why we use TypeScript in web development and why it's important. As I mentioned, I'm going to try and do a, a video going over in detail, a more sort of um, tutorial going through TypeScript introducing you so that you can get up and going. And I'll probably do that in an Angular 4 sort of environment, just because that's more than likely where most of you are going to be using it. And then we'll show you how to get that started. And my goal is to have it in under 30 minutes. You can cover quite a bit in 30 minutes, but that's kind of what I want my tutorial lengths to be. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and share. Support me on Patreon. Join the Facebook group, all that sort of stuff. And uh, let me know if you are if you like TypeScript as much as I do. I have always liked it, and now that I've been using it professionally for about a month, I have really just fallen in love with it because it makes it so much easier for you to follow things. And in terms of object-oriented programming, which you are doing with Angular with your components, it is so is the the development time from what it would have been if you're doing object-oriented JavaScript to TypeScript is is night and day and uh i've really fallen in love with that so uh thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next video bye quick shout out to deviceplus.com if you're interested in the latest iot's hacks do-it-yourself projects revolving around arduino and raspberry pi they have some great how-to guides i i highly encourage you to check them out and thanks for watching